All right, so I wanted to build on what we worked on yesterday um, and maybe take it in a slightly different direction, which is I wanted to talk about forms. So yesterday we talked about getting data into your React component via an AJAX request. So now we're gonna take that data that we get from that AJAX request and we're gonna to try to use it inside of a form. So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about um, as we progress here. All right, so the first thing is, is you'll notice if you've pulled down this code and played with it, um, there's actually an error. So you'll see this each child in array should have a unique key prop. So I, I left that out yesterday, wanted to show how you clean up that error. Um, and so it's just good practice to do this inside of all of your React code. So we iterated over movies yesterday, generating this list. And each one of these list items um, is unique but does not have anything to identify it to React as unique. And the result of that, since I then put it into this list, is this error that you see in the console, which says each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key prop. Um, so whenever you see this, you'll wanna check your code for this kind of um, syntax, where you're mapping over something and returning uh, an array of objects. Uh, to fix it is pretty easy. All you have to do is add this key and it just needs to be something that's unique. And usually in your data, you're gonna have something unique. And in this case, um, because I went and looked at the JSON, it's uh, IMDB ID is a unique value. So now if I save that and we go back to the page, um, we can refresh it. Sorry, let me clear out these errors first and then we'll refresh it. And now if I go look at the console, that error is gone. Okay, so that's just a quick tip. Uh, now let's take a look at some forms. So we have this input box sitting here and notice that it's empty. And yesterday when we wrote this code, we added a default value to the search. So you can see query equals star. But we could just as easily have added a default value to the input. Now there's one way to do that. And I can just say value equals something. So we're going to put trek into that field. And now if you go to the page, you'll see that it has Trek here. And um, I actually don't think it'll update the, the search because, just because. Uh, but I can type inside of here. But notice as I type, weird things happen. So that's not what I would expect the user experience to be like. What, what it does if you put value for your component is it sets the value of that component to whatever this is permanently, and it won't let the user change it. So that's a bit of a problem for us because we actually do want the user to be able to change it. Now I could also put a default value, and frequently this is what you're gonna do. So if I get data back from a database and I'm filling out a form um, with the data from the database, from maybe an Ajax call or something, I'll wanna use default value and fill in these fields with whatever the default values were from my database. And now if I switch over, let's just refresh this page, you can see there's track, that's the default value, but it lets me type in here. It's not locked to that original value. So you can use default value if it makes sense to use default value. The third way to deal with this situation, and probably the most common way to deal with it, is to use the state. Um, so what I can do is up here in, I have my state object, I can say, I want the query to be track. And now I can come back to my component and I can say value equals this, this dot state dot query. So now switching back over, refresh this page, you can see there's track. And again, it doesn't let me change anything. But now what I can do is I have already added this onChange method, which will update the search. And right now it's just changing the search. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this.setState and we're gonna say query is gonna be this.refs.query.value. So now each time the onChange method is called and it's called whenever the user types inside of that text box, this update search method will be called. We're gonna change the state to whatever value it is the user has typed, and we're gonna update the search. 
So now switching back over, refresh the page, we have Trek. Notice that it is updating the search and I can type in the text box and I get results that look the way that I would expect. Okay, so that is um, how you deal with a controlled component. There's all the documentations out here in the, on the React site. Um, so they talk about having controlled components where your value is basically static, you can't change it. They talk about um, some issues you might have with checkboxes and radio buttons. They talk about uncontrolled components, which is what we actually had before where we're not setting any value. And then they talk about um, using the state to hold the value. And then there's um, information here specific to the different HTML components, whether it be checkboxes or uh, text areas. So usually in a text area, it would be the content in between the tags, but they still use value. Um, so there's just a couple of little nuances that are slightly different than your typical HTML components. All right, so now let's let's try um, a different component. So let's add a select. All right, so down inside of my render method here, we already have a list of movies, so we're going to let the user select from a list of movies. Now to start, all I have to do is put in a select, and if I go view the page, you'll see right there I have an empty select box. Okay, so let's populate that with the movies that we get back from this Ajax request. And I'm gonna call it options. And we're just gonna iterate over each of the movies. And instead of generating a list item, we're gonna output an option. Um, I still want a unique key, so right here we'll use string interpolation and we'll include the ID, but I'm going to put option in front of this thing. All right. So now this should generate a list of options that I can then add to my select right here. And let's go see if this does what we would expect. All right. So now you can see I have a select box with a list of movies based on this, um, this search. Okay. So now the next step. Um, I want to be able to have a value for the option that's different than what is displayed to the user. So our value is going to come from movie and it'll probably just be IMD BID. Um, that will allow me to quickly and easily find the movie um, in the list of data that I have using its identifier. All right, so at this point now, I have um, an array of these options that I can insert into this select. And whenever the user picks one of those, we can fire another on change method. So let's go ahead and we'll add that. All right, so on change is going to equal, and we're going to use arrow functions here again. Um, this function is always going to be passed an event. That's why I put the E right there. Uh, we're not actually going to use it. We'll just discard it. But you can do things with it like e.preventDefault if you don't want it to perform whatever the default action. That can be beneficial whenever you have a submit button in a form. Uh, you don't actually want the form to be submitted back to the server, so you can call it e.preventDefault. That will prevent the form from being submitted. Um, and you know, truthfully, I could just admit that I just do it out of habit because then I remember that it's there if, in case we need to use it for something. All right, so we're going to call um, uh, let's call it select movie. All right, so now we we need to go add the select movie method. So I'm going to add that method right here. Now. Whenever this um, select changes, whenever the user selects a value, this select movie is going to be called. All right, so now we need a way to get the value from the select. So we're going to add a ref to it, and we're going to call it um, select movie. Actually, let's call it uh, movie movie selector. Okay. All right. 
So just to prove that we get this value anytime the user selects something, uh, let's do a console.log this.refs.movieselector.value. Okay. So this should output the ID of the movie that's selected. Let's go check and see that if that worked correctly. All right, so I've got my console over here. We'll just clear that out. And now when I pick one of these movies, you can see there is the identifier associated with that movie. All right, so now let's take this a step further. Say I wanted to specify a default value for the select. Um, for example, I am generating a form that will allow the user to update values given to me by an AJAX call. These are gonna be the values inside of your database from your server. Um, so you want it to have a default value um, that was equivalent to what the user has already selected at some point in the past. All right, so we're gonna again use value just like we did with the input. We're gonna do this.state dot um, current movie ID. And now I need to give it a current movie ID. So and do that right up here. Let's go back into our console and let's just grab one of these just for the sake of demonstration purposes. And I will put that right there. All right, so this is going to pick a current movie ID that wasn't the first one in the list, and it should set that when the page loads. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh this page, and you'll notice that it is The Force Awakens rather than A New Hope. So by default, it would normally pick the first item in the list, but instead we got it picking one of these guys. Okay, the bad part of this is that um, you'll notice we can't change it it's just going to default back to a new hope now when I try to change anything in the text box. So let's fix that. Okay, so we've got this current movie ID. Instead of just calling console.log, we're going to call this.set state. state. And we're going to say current movie ID is going to be this guy right here. Then I'm just going to copy and paste. There we go. Get rid of the console log. And now when I pick a different movie, you'll notice that it stays the value that the user selected inside of the drop-down box. Okay, so now um, let's just do one other thing. Let's go ahead and display the image for that movie when the user selects it. All right, so that requires that I find the movie that the user selected. I can use lodash for that. Just call find over this.state.movies. And the find, um, the lodash find method takes the collection that you want to iterate over. It gives you one of those at a time, and then you just have to return true or false if the given object matches your search criteria. So we can do return movie.imd. Um, the ID equal to um, this dot state dot current movie ID. All right. So remember, every time we change the select, it's going to set that current movie ID right here in this method up here. And then, of course, calling set state will cause our component to re-render. So we'll, then this code is going to get executed, and we should be able to find this selected movie. All right. So we want to be able to show the image. And so now we have to get the image. All right, so if we were able to find a selected movie, then we're going to say image is equal to image with the source equal to selected movie dot poster is the value. So let's save that. Push the page. All right. And not working. Let me do break. Okay. Let's take a look inside the code and see what I messed up here. Alright, so you can see that the code does cause this to re-render.
um, but we're not finding the selected movie. So let's figure out why. Oh, it's because it's this does state dot movies. So we're missing that. Okay. So now we are rendering the, the poster for the image. Okay, so now as I select the different movies, it'll update the image based on that current movie selection. And that's how you deal with forms in React. Any questions? Okay, thanks.